Hugh Latimer, Mr. Fearless, a man who goes to Cambridge University at the age of 14 and then gets seven degrees, is, to say the least, a bright spark. A man, you might say, was hard to fool or difficult to trap. Raised as a Roman Catholic, Hugh Latimer was deeply worried about all that he was hearing from his friends at Cambridge. As they read the books of the Mad Monk Luther and the Morning Star Wycliffe, it was quite clear they were moving away from what the Roman Catholic Church had taught him. Using all his brilliant intellect, he took on all those who opposed Roman Catholicism, arguing in debates to prove them wrong. Would anyone be able to stop this brilliant man? Well, the answer is, thankfully, yes. A man called Thomas Bilney was watching Mr. Latimer very closely and could see his power and influence. For days, he thought long and hard about how he might explain to Latimer God's free forgiveness. And then, an idea entered his mind. As a priest, Mr. Latimer was ordained to listen and forgive people their sins. Crafty Mr. Bilney visited Latimer and began to list all the wrong things he had done. He confessed, I prayed to Mary, paid for indulgences, walked on pilgrimages, but not one had dealt with my guilt. Every day I feared that God would judge me and send me to hell. But then I turned to Jesus and realised for the first time that he alone could forgive my sin. It was him alone and his death alone that could give me free forgiveness. Suddenly, from inside the confession box, Mr Bilney could hear Latimer weeping. Just like Bilney, Latimer had realised God's forgiveness was a gift to be accepted and not a thing to earn. Everywhere Latimer went, he preached a message of free forgiveness. And everywhere Latimer went, he got into big trouble with the Roman Catholic Church. So much so, Bishop Gardner chucked him out as a heretic. Was that the end of his influence? Not quite. For the King of England, Henry VIII reinstated him. It was at a cost, as Latimer agreed to 14 Roman Catholic doctrines that were against God's word. But, as we will see, this bad mistake led to a lion-like boldness. The king asked Latimer to preach to him on the Lord's Day. First, he presented him with a Bible, open at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. And then he preached his sermon, refusing to hold back on preaching against Henry's adultery. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God shall judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. So angry was Henry that he stormed down to Latimer and declared, Next Sunday, you will return, and I demand that you take back all that you have said. Would he bottle it and preach what the king wanted to hear? Or would he be brave like John the Baptist and call the king to repentance? Everyone in the palace was talking about Latimer and what he would preach. The big day finally arrived, and slowly Latimer climbed the steps of the pulpit to deliver his sermon. Hugh Latimer, do you know who you are speaking to today? You are speaking to the high and mighty monarch, the king's most excellent majesty, who could take away thy life if you offend him in any way. So take care as to not displease him. Had he bottled it? Had the adulterous king won the day? Latimer continued. But consider now, Hugh, who sent you and whose message you bring, the great and mighty God. He is the one who sent you, and whose presence now we all stand in. And he has the power to send you to hell. Therefore, you take care to deliver the message that I preached last week. Marriage should be honoured by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God shall judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Astounded by Latimer's bravery, Henry VIII said, Blessed be God, I have so honest a servant. 